Hey everyone, welcome to part 84 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we'll complete the shop system. We'll make some improvements to the shop UI so that we can see the player and the merchant while the shop UI is opened. And we'll also save the money of the player. So let's look at how to do all this. You can support the making of this series by becoming a Patreon and get some cool rewards for it like access to the complete project files of the series exclusive tutorials that are not covered on YouTube and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start the video. So I want to make an improvement to the shop system. So right now, when we open the shop UI, the UI blocks our player and the merchant in the scene, right? But it would be better to show them on the left side over here. So we can achieve that by moving the camera towards right. So let's minimize the game window and try moving the camera towards right. All right, so I'll increase the X position of the camera to move it towards right. Okay. So now we can see the player and the merchant and it looks much better, right? So when we open the shop UI, we can increase the exposition to something like 3.5. So let's do this from the code. So in the game controller script, I'll create a new function to move the camera. So here I'll create a public function called move camera. So this will take a vector two called move offset, which is the offset by which we want to move the camera. Okay. So in this function, we just have to update the position of our camera by the move offset. So in the game controller, we have a reference to the camera in the world camera object. So let's go ahead and change the position of it. So I'll say world camera dot transform dot position plus equal to move offset. Okay. But we can't add the move offset directly to the position because move offset is a vector two and position is a vector three. Right. So here I'll have to create a new vector three instead. And I'll pass the value of move offset into it. Okay, so this will move the camera for us. So next, I want to do a fade in and fade out while we move the camera. So before moving the camera, I'll do a fade in. So I'll call fader dot instance dot fade in function. And for the duration, I'll pass something like 0.5. That should be enough. And we want to wait for the fade in to complete before we start moving the camera. So for that, we'll have to make this a coroutine. And I'll add a yield return at the start of the fade in function to make it wait. Okay. So now after we move the camera, I want to fade out. So let me just copy the fade in function and change it to fade out. All right. So in the case of fade out, I don't want to always wait. The reason is because there will be things that we need to do before we fade out. For example, in this case, after moving the camera, we also want to show the shop UI before we start to fade out. Right. So in this case, we don't want to wait for the fade out. So what I'll do is I'll add an optional parameter over here called wait for fade out. And let me just set it to false by default so that it's optional. And if wait for fade out is true, then we'll use yield return to wait. And otherwise we'll just put this inside start coroutine function 
so that it won't wait okay so that's all we have to do in the move camera function so next let's call this function when we open the shop ui so from the shop controller this is where we are opening the shop ui so i'll move the camera by calling the function that we just created all right so we have to pass the move offset so let's make the move offset a serialized field variable so that we can set it from the inspector so let me create a vector 2 and I'll just call this something like shop camera offset so now we can pass that into our move camera function all right so since the move camera is an async operation we have to be careful when we change the state so if we change the state to buying before calling the move camera function then the problem is we'll be able to select an item to buy when the fade-in is happening so we have to make sure to change the state to buying after all the async operation so let me actually move this line here okay so this will move the camera for us when we open the shop ui so next we should also reset the camera back to its original position when we close the shop ui right so we close the shop ui from this function so from here we should also move the camera back to its original position so i'll call the move camera function again and this time for the move offset i'll pass minus shop camera offset so that we'll subtract the offset and reset the position of the camera all right and by the way to call a coroutine like this we have to make this function a coroutine so let me change its return type to i enumerator all right and if we make it a coroutine we'll also have to use the start coroutine function when calling it so let me use a lambda over here and put this function inside the start coroutine function okay so that's all we need to do so let's go to unity and test this so first we need to set the value of the shop camera offset in the shop controller okay so i'll set it to something like 3.5 for the x so now let's try testing the game okay so now when i open the shop ui you can see that the camera was moved towards the right and now we can see the player on the screen and there was also a fade in and fade out while we opened it right so the fade in and fade out was good when we opened it but when we are going back it looks a bit weird right so that's because our shop ui is appearing on top of the fader when it's fading in so we can easily fix that by placing the fader on the top so let me go inside the ui canvas prefab and right now the fader is the first element in the ui canvas so all the other ui will appear on top of it so we can just drag it down and make the fader the last element so that it will appear on the top all right so let's go ahead and test this now okay so now if i go back from the shop ui the fading happens on top of the shop ui and it looks much better so we are pretty much done with the shop system but there is one more thing that we need to do so right now we are not saving the money that the player has right so let's go ahead and do that so the money is stored in the wallet script so we can easily save this by making the wallet class implement the i saveable interface so let me use control dot to implement the capture state and restore state functions okay 
and in the capture state the state that you want to capture is the money so I'll just return the value of the money variable okay and we also have to restore it from the restore state so I'll convert state to a float and restore it to the money variable all right so that's all we need to do and the money should be saved so let's go ahead and test that all right I'll go buy some items and spend some money okay so currently I have thousand dollars and if I buy an item worth 500 then I only have 500 left with me so now if we save the game then the money should also be saved so let me go ahead and save and then I'll restart the game and try loading it all right so now if I go ahead and check the money I have as you can see that it's $500 just like we had when saving the game all right so the money is being saved and restored successfully so now we are done with the shop system it took us a few videos to achieve this but we have a pretty good system here with lots of features so I'll stop the video here so if you think these videos are helpful please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out so I'll see you in the next video